Turn your Bible to, uh, oh, let's see here, Romans 1 first. It's a little bit special, special uh, Sunday school lesson. Romans chapter 1. <clears throat> Oh, I like what Paul says here. Yeah, Romans chapter 1, we'll start in verse 1. Paul, uh, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of, this, of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom are ye also the called. Uh, where else do you find that phrase, the called? Does anybody know? Anybody recollect? Um, now I can't remember who are the called according to his purpose. All things work together for good to them who love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose is what it says. We always say it, um, all things work together for good to them, uh, who love the Lord and are called to, we always leave out the but it's a very, very directed statement. It's, it's to everybody who are the called. In the group, the called. So verse 6 again, among whom ye, are ye also the called of Jesus Christ. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, Let's see here, for I am, at verse 16, skip on down there, then we'll go uh, someplace else here in a little bit. Paul said, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Why, why is it to the Jew first? Why does it go to them first? They are. Somebody else? He came into his own. His own received him not. He was born a Jew of the tribe of Judah, um, <clears throat> circumcised the eighth day, on and on and on. He is as Jew as anybody else is Jew. And... Um, so the Bible says, he who is first shall be last and he who is last shall be first in the kingdom of heaven. And God came first to the Jews. They rejected him. So they're going to be called in last. God came to us then secondly. And we are called in first. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. So, um, yeah, he who is last shall be first, and he who is first shall be last. But the idea of verse 16, Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Don't ever be ashamed of what you are in Christ. Don't be ashamed of Jesus. Don't be ashamed. Uh, you don't have to make a big spectacle of it. But also, don't be ashamed to bow your head and pray over a meal at a restaurant. Doesn't matter if the waitress has to wait on you if, to put the plates down. Uh, doesn't matter if uh, the people behind you are listening to you and then they and, and they start talking about you. Um, don't be ashamed of who you are. Um, my preacher, when I was a teenager, preacher golf, uh, instilled that in us young people. And he told us, when you go to school, he said, first of all, I want you to know there is no law 
that prohibits you from praying in school if you want to. I went, really? He said, yep. They cannot tell you you cannot pray in school. You can't do it. <clears throat> Shoot. I prayed the day I took my driver's test in the car. The man sitting there, and he says, okay, what do you do first? And I said, well, first, can I pray? And he told a little joke. He chuckled and said, well, the rules say you're not supposed to have any outside help. That's what he said. And he said, but in this case, we'll let it slide. But anyway, uh, when I sat down to eat my lunch, I had my friends that were in band with me. And when I sat down to eat my lunch, um, they knew that I was, I was going to pray. I wasn't going to make a big spectacle of myself. Uh, I was just going to say a quick prayer of thanksgiving over the food and, and that was that. And they respected that. My friends that I went to high school with respected that. They didn't, they didn't laugh at me. They didn't uh, think I was an embarrassment to them. Um, they respected that. And so don't ever be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation. Turn to 1 Corinthians. <clears throat> chapter 15, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Here he is, uh, everything that happens in the four Gospels, the Reader's Digest version. Verse 15, verse, uh, chapter 15, verse 1. <clears throat> Moreover, that's something you can name your next dog, moreover. You know, in Luke 16, where the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, moreover, the dog came and licked his sores. <laughs> mm -hmm. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if. Is there an if to salvation? Well, of course there is. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. He said, verse 3, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, and I want you to remember something. When Paul said he received it, who did he receive it from? He received it directly from the mouth of Christ. According to Galatians, uh, when Paul was saved, he conferred not with any of the other apostles. But he got away. And we believe for about 14 years that he uh, sequestered himself and received the doctrines that he wrote about directly from the mouth of Christ. In other words, he, he had Jesus as his professor, okay? And um, so Jesus himself taught him the gospel, taught him... Uh, what it was about, how it was linked in with uh, the Old Testament shadows, the Old Testament types, the Old Testament laws and covenants and doctrines and prophecies and things like that. Uh, Paul had a pretty good idea uh, that when he read the Old Testament, he could, he could show you what, that, what each character was, how each character was a type of Christ, or how each character was a type of the Antichrist, or um, how how a, a woman character is going to be either the glorious church, uh, or it's going to be a, a harlot church. And he could just take you through that and show that because Jesus taught that to him, which is why in 2 Corinthians 12, 
when Paul talks about the, the abundance of the revelations that was given to him, he said, a messenger of Satan was sent to me by God to buffet me every day, lest I should be exalted. And Paul, that was, I think that was his main number one uh, sin, as it were, is that he loved to be looked upon, exalted, uh, uplifted above everybody else. I think that's what his, I think that's what his major uh, sin with God was. And so God humbled him every single day that he, that he lived. God humbled him and kept him on his knees and would not remove the thorn that was in his flesh. And so, um, <clears throat> Paul referred to it that, that way, the messenger of Satan to buffet me. And I believe he was buffeted daily, uh, by this thing. Um, so let's see here. Back in verse, uh, back in verse one, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received and wherein ye stand. By which also ye are saved. Present tense, right now, you are in the category of people that are saved. But there is an if there. If someone comes along and tries to tell you that there are no conditions upon your salvation, uh, it's not being genuine. They're not being honest. Paul says it here, by which also you're saved if uh, ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. And see the word memory and see the word believed. Those are um, commandments given to us by God that have everything to do with the working of the mind and the heart, not necessarily the working of the flesh. Okay? Um, if you did something to me or let's say my family, and it made me so absolutely angry that I tore into you and I beat you literally to death and you died at my hand. Uh, it could be said that I committed and broke the commandment of thou shalt not kill. I broke that commandment. Now, there may have been reason for it. But the bottom line is, I broke that commandment. However, if you did something to me or somebody I love, and the thought came to my mind of what I wanted to do to you, but I didn't act upon it, it's not, it's not an action of my body, it's the working of my mind. And in something like that, who is the only one who can actually look into the mind and the heart of someone and determine where they stand with God? Who is the only one who can do that? Yeah, Jesus. Jesus, God, same, same answer. Uh, the Bible, the four Gospels make that clear that Jesus, the Bible was all the time saying Jesus perceived their thoughts. And the Lord knew their heart. So he knew exactly what they were thinking amongst themselves. Or if they were murmuring together, Jesus was able to extract from them what their mind was saying and forming in their lips and what it was they were saying out loud. He had the ability uh, to do that. Uh, so back again in verse 2, the condition... Of being saved and that salvation being kept in you uh, until until eternity comes has everything to do with the working of your mind have you ever known someone who maybe years ago 
They said they believed in God. They believed in Christ. They believed in the gospel. But something happened. And over time, that belief became vanity. It just blew away with the wind. And that person is a thousand miles away from the gospel right now. How many of you know somebody like that or have known somebody like that? There was a man like that. In fact, there were several that were like that. One of them was one of them was one of my Sunday school teachers here who I really looked up to. And I remember as a young man sitting back there Oh, I'd say back close to where Sister Betty's sitting. And he would, he would help take up the offering on Sunday morning. And um, I remember the, the pastor asked the question, and he may have done this on purpose. But the pastor asked the question, um, something along the lines of, uh, if Jesus were to return today, how many of you are ready to go? Say amen and raise your hand. Hands go up all over the building. Amen's everywhere. And I just happened to turn around and looked to my Sunday school teacher. He didn't say amen. He didn't raise his hand. And I thought that was strange. I did. I just, what in the world? And, uh, Probably not too long after that, he quit coming. And uh, to my knowledge, he's not ever come back yet. I think he's still alive. I've not heard anything about his passing. I think he's still alive. But um, that just that that kind of puzzled me as a, as a young boy. Watching this man who I revered and looked up to as a, as a good Christian example. But him not saying that he was ready to meet Jesus if he were to appear in the air in that day. And what had happened was, what I guess was happening was, there was a battle in his mind and in his heart over the gospel. And apparently he decided one day that what he wanted to do with his life did not include church, church living, Bible reading, um, teaching a, Sunday, a boys Sunday school class. Apparently his future had none of that in it. So he just gave up and quit. That's bothered me for a long time now. Let's move on. Verse 3. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. How that Christ died for our sins according to what? The scriptures. Oh, you should have heard what I heard this week. Mm-mm-mm. It was a doozy. Um, let's see here. I'm trying to remember the, the context of it. Oh, yeah. Man, uh, there's a man by the name of Perry Stone. He has a TV show, his own TV show on Trinity Broadcasting Network. How many of you have ever heard of him? Okay. A few years ago, he, he was doing a sit-down meeting with his father, Fred, not Fred, I was thinking Fred Flintstone. <laughs> he, was doing, he was doing a meeting, he sit sit down talking with his dad, and his dad was relaying the story that he had told Perry all of his life about how he was called to preach. And he said that... One night he went to sleep and in, in a vision that he had during his sleep, he awakened and he was in this cabin, this log cabin that 
his father and grandfather built. And um, <clears throat> he said he got up and he walked over like in the living room area. And all of a sudden, this right arm came right through the wall. And reached out and touched Perry Stone's dad on the forehead. And he passed out. And when he came to, later on, he realized that that hand and arm belonged to an old friend of his that had died years ago by the name of Al Collins. And he said, there stands Al Collins. And he said, it, it's, he said, now Al Collins is dead, but it was the spirit man of Al Collins. And he's standing there telling me, he's saying, God has called you to preach. God has sent me to tell you that you have been called and chosen to preach the gospel. You have been called to preach. He kept saying that over and over again. And he said that at one point, um, he was in heaven and he was in this great big library full of books. And he said it was the, it was the books written of all the sermons and the messages and the sayings and the acts of Jesus that didn't make it into the Bible. Now folks, we're, this is dangerous. Because people will believe that stuff. And um, he made the statement he said a lot of times, he said, he said, if you've got an anointed preacher of God, a lot of times he'll be preaching. And he said, I mean, you can tell that what he's saying has got anointing all over it, but you can't really place it in the Bible. He said it's because it didn't come from the Bible. It came out of this library of books of things that Jesus said that man doesn't know about. And the Holy Ghost is bringing those things to his preachers, and they're preaching it on earth right now. And I went, my, 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 that's dangerous. You know what that is? If any man preach any other gospel, let him be accursed. Um, if it's not in the Bible, it ain't worth preaching. If it is not in the written word of God, it is not worth repeating. This is what, what comes in here is, this is where you start testing the spirits to see whether they be of God or not. And the only way to do that is to check to see if it's written in scriptures somewhere. If it's written in the scriptures, you're fine. If it isn't, you better watch out. Because you've just added to something to the word of God. Now, um, Verse 3 again, for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins. How did, and, and how do we know this? According to the scriptures. Everything that the scripture writes concerning what happened to Jesus on that day uh, is right here in the word of God. It's either in Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, or possibly uh, part of it in the book of Acts. It's in one of those places or a couple of those places. Verse 4. And that he was buried. And that he rose again the third day. According to the scriptures. And that he was seen of Kephas. Then of the twelve. After that. He was seen of above. Five hundred brethren at once in other words there must have been a gathering of God's saints during during the the interim time the 40 days between uh, the end of his crucifixion and um, and the day that he ascended into heaven he was seen uh, of above 500 brethren all at once I like it of whom the greater part remain unto this present, uh, unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that, he was seen of James, 
then of all the apostles. And last of all, he was seen of me also as of one born out of due time. Let me ask you this. When did Jesus see Paul? Huh? On the road to Damascus. Who agrees with that? I do. Anybody else agree with it? Yeah, now, now that I do, yeah. Uh, we don't really have any record of any time prior to the... And you might say, well, Jesus was already dead, buried, resurrected, and uh, had already ascended up into heaven. Um... And so that it would have been impossible. No, it apparently wasn't impossible because we know and we believe according to what Paul tells us that he actually did see Jesus, the Jesus, appear to him, both appear to him and call him. He was chosen by God himself to be an apostle and to preach the gospel and uh, boy what a change for Paul's life instantly just like that just like that the apostle Paul has gone from someone who is on his way to arrest Christians bringing them back to Jerusalem so that they could be tried convicted and killed for the sin of believing in Jesus Christ. Now, I love my religion. I love the God of that religion. I love the Savior of that religion. And I love the, the, the words of that religion, the Bible. I love them all. Um... We don't think much, or I don't, think much about being persecuted for it. Because I think, why should I be? I'm not hurting anybody. I'm not damaging somebody's mind. I'm not, definitely not brainwashing people. I'm not doing that. So why is it, or why would it be, that because I preach the gospel, that for some reason I'm a danger to society. Why would, why would I be considered that way? Anybody know? Anybody want to take a guess? Do what? No. Dave. Freedom? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Kim Jong-un. Um, his father before him and his father before him. They hold absolute power over the North Koreans. So much so that Literally, you could be thrown in prison, you and all of your family, because if you go to prison, your family goes to prison. You could be thrown in prison for not having thoughts toward Kim Jong-un that are favorable to him. If you don't believe that he is a living God over the people of North Korea, you could be killed as a result of that. That's just, that's crazy. That is insane. And so, I guess it stands to reason that there are not very many uh, Christians in North Korea because it's against the law to have a Bible with you. Uh, still, some efforts are made to try to win and convert those who are in North Korea. But the bottom line is, they hate it so bad that they don't want anybody knowing who Christ is, because in the Bible, they will find out the truth. And what does the truth do? It makes people 
free. And the, the Kim family does not want people in North Korea to be free. They all are servants of the state and thus servants of the Kim family. And uh, who is it that gets paid all the money in North Korea? Who gets the highest cut of the pie? Kim Jong-un, always. And for what reason? Nothing other than his dad was the dictator before him and his grandpa was dictator before him. Uh, but anyway, don't be ashamed of the gospel. Amen? Don't be ashamed of the gospel. Let's go to prayer. Father, we ask your blessing this morning. Thank you, Lord, for a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful day that you have given us. We thank you, God, for lighting our lives with the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Help us, Father, that wherever we go, we're not ashamed. Father, I know some places that you could go there and not be ashamed to be known as a Christian or a Christian minister. And so, Father, I pray, dear God, that you would help all of us to never, ever be ashamed to be called Christ-like in our lives. Bless your word this morning, we pray in Jesus' name. All of God's people said, Amen. Amen.